Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Catalyst Echo with Catalyst Echo Designs and today I am coming to you with a resin technique featuring molds by Zuri. So what we're going to do is we are go I'm going to show you how to use quick cure resin to mold something around an irregular surface, like a non-flat surface. So I have a couple of these porcelain bases and I've been wanting to redesign them for quite some time. And it came into my mind to do them as like a fire and ice type vibe. So we're going to use the beautiful Phoenix mold today. And we are going to wrap it around her face like this after we cast it. And I'm going to show you the whole process, including cure time, so that you can see how quick, how quick it takes, but also what is involved. So I hope you enjoy this video. And yeah, stick around, grab a drink, have a seat. Let's get started. So for the first part of this, the main things that you need are for tools are a digital scale. I really do recommend getting some sort of a very high end digital scale that uh, gives you a really good indication of weight by volume. Um, the mold, obviously, we've got this Phoenix mold right here. It's quite beautiful. You can see I, I did just cast something in it like about two hours ago or something like that. So we are just gonna we are we are just gonna cast it as is. Um, you should clean your molds between every use, and I did clean it a bit. There's just a little bit that needs to come off. It needs to get a little bit of a deeper cleaning. We need glue. I like this quick grip glue. It's not very viscous. So a lot of times I use E6000, but if I'm molding something around, I use this quick grip glue because it does tear up a little faster than E6000, and it allows me. It, it's a little less viscous as well, which means that I can spread it a little more evenly over the back of the piece. Salts, I'll explain, I'll explain when we get there. Tongue depressor or popsicle stick. And a plastic cup. Oh, and obviously my resin as well. So for this, we are using uh, amazing quick cast resin. It sets up in 10 minutes. Um, it's a polyurethane resin. It's part A and part B. Comes in a box like this. <laughs> All right. And I, the only reason I'm showing you exactly which brand I use is because a lot of people ask me, and I just thought it would be more expedient to just show you. Um, however, this is mostly featuring focusing on how to use these Zuri molds rather than like other additional types of things. So, and the other, uh, I also have one of the mandala molds here just in case we make more resin than we need to fill this mold. I, it's a good idea to always have another mold handy that you're going to be using later in case of an overflow. Um, and if we do have, if we do have enough to pour one of these, I will spend some of the 10 minutes showing you how to get the resin into the, the very shallow style molds like this. So, let's get started. First thing you want to do is place your cup on top of your scale while it is off. Then you can have it be zero. Like, I don't know if you can see that exactly, but that's a zero right there. Okay. You want to wear you, It's a very good idea to wear gloves. I'm not wearing gloves because I'm already aware that this resin does not do anything bad to my skin. So if I do get it on me, it's okay. Like, it doesn't cause any kind of reaction. But I do recommend wearing gloves. Whenever you cast with anything like polyurethane resin, just in case, because it can be very like uh, epoxy resin gives me like a nasty, nasty rash. You don't want that at all. Trust me on that. So we're gonna start with part A. Gonna start with part A and part B. And the reason why you're mi we're mixing by volume here is it's a very good idea to get everything perfectly correct. We're gonna start with part A. You don't have to start with part A. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so that is definitely enough. Okay, so that, we're looking for 52.52. And you want to get it as close as possible. Now, does it have to be exact? No. Should, it, should you get it as close as you absolutely can? Yes. And what I, I really should tell you that it, should, that it has to be exact, but it, I have, this scale has such a fine detail that it's a little okay if it's exact. Well, yeah, I'm definitely going to have some extra. Okay, so there we go. <clears throat> now, the key to this process, and I'll often remove it, 
the key to this process is making sure that the amount that the resin that you're pouring first of all you want to mix it together very very well with this resin it turns clear this is a little older it, but it turns basically clear when it's when it's ready to go so it's really important that you mix the resin extremely well okay I'm going to place this down. Let's, um, I don't want to get it on anything. <laughs> there we go. You don't want to get resin on things because um, it will cure up and stick to other things. So I can move this this way. And you just want to verify, just check your resin, just make sure it's not, can't see any, like it'll be cloudy, it'll be slightly cloudy, or you will be able to see like the, like a swirl of marks. You want it now. I don't have much time, much working time, so we're just going to go ahead and pour this really fast, okay? We definitely have a little bit of extra in here. Hopefully it'll be enough to put, yeah, I think that'll be enough for one mandala. All right, so we have that. That's cast. We're going to set this slightly aside so that we can, that it can cure up. So with this resin, it starts to turn white as it cures. And so we're just going to watch that, and I'm going to cast one of these really fast. So one of the reasons I like the tongue depressor style molds, or the tongue depressor style of sticks, is because that's a pour. What I like to do is I pour it from the center, right? Put it all in there. And you see how it's kind of coming out? I'm going to take all that. I'm going to shift it. Yeah, so there is, it, there is going to be a little bit of an overpour on this. When you're casting a shallow mold like this, that is to be expected, but it is very easy to edit these. To edit these. So you just want to make sure that everything is, is very well filled, okay? So now, even though there's an overpour here, you, see, you can already see this is already starting to set up. So even though there's an overpour here, this will be fine. This should be fine. We'll just make sure that you can see now that's starting to turn white. So I'm going to watch that. <laughs> I'm going to set this one a little bit to the side so because we're not going to demold it right away. This one we're going to need to demold right away. We're just going to watch that. Bring this up here. Okay. So, one of the things that I did off camera was I made sure that this was as clean as as humanly as was humanly possible. This is a kind of an older piece, so I, I you have to make sure it's free from any sort of debris, any kind of oils. Like touching it with my hands is actually not the greatest plan. Um, any sort of oils or anything that's going to like make it not adhere with the glue very well. And so how much you how much you need to clean it, I can't really stress enough that cleaning is super important. How much you need to clean it, honestly, it's up to you. But I do recommend at least making sure that when you wipe it away with your cleaning solution that nothing comes back, okay? So that's what we're doing here. And I've already done that off camera, so it's fine. We're just going to set up our little, like, kind of station here. So the reason for the salts. When you're working with something that is slippery or slidey like this, you know how when you try to glue something down and it just goes shoo, all over the place, right? It's just shoo, slide, shoo, slide. The salt, we're going to put a little tiny bit of salt on the glue in order, in order to prevent a lot of sliding, okay? That's what the salt is for. It's a little woodworking technique. It really works very well with wood glue. Also probably need one of these. Yeah. Yeah, I just have a little like very, very inexpensive craft brush that I'm not using, like something that you it's clean, but you know, you're not gonna get a good paint job with it. Um this will be for painting glue around the edges. Alrighty. 
And yeah, the important part of making sure, you have to make sure that the resin is fully cured. So you can see around the edges, the edges are not cured yet. Although like the center is cured, the edges are not cured. With a deeper mold such as this, it's the edges are going to cure towards the end. And that's good for our needs because we want the edges to be almost uncured, like just slightly cured. It's going to help us a lot in the end game. Like while we're, while we're attaching it to the space, it's going to help us a lot if we can really manipulate the very small details, okay? And I did a pretty good job of making sure that nothing was an over course, so that's good. Um, really want to be careful. You, you, like pour more shallow than you think you need when you're doing a project like this. This is a little bit thicker than I really intended, but I, I think it'll still work just fine. So we'll just we'll just see how we go. It's very important though that you decant it at the right time. It's not the right time just yet. Um, here. You can kind of feel like right now, this is a good this is a good amount of curing if I was gonna use this one. Um, it should be very floppy. So it's still a little bit warm, which means that it hasn't fully set up yet. Just yeah, so you can kind of tell if it's ready by whether or not like you can if you can pull it, then it's ready. If you can't, if it's if it's resisting you, then just leave it for just a few minutes more. You do have a little bit of working time with this. Um, this quick care resin says it sets up in 10 minutes, and it does if you're pouring something. Like for very specific things, it does set up in 10 minutes. But for this, okay, wait. Oh. Okay, so that's not quite ready. Okay, that's not quite ready. This isn't quite ready either. So this you want to be as careful as possible yeah because you can tell it's still very Oop. all right so we're going to just give this another like couple of minutes here and one trick i have for demolding the don't want to if you saw I flexed this a little bit, you really don't want to do that. Don't flex these uh, the shallow molds. Like the, you'll, your molds will last longer if you keep them as flat as possible when you're demolding things. So, I mean, it's we all kind of you know flex it a little bit. Like it's part of the process. We all kind of flex it a little bit, and it's okay. But um, just do your best not to. <laughs> All right, so we kind of know where we're going to put this, but why don't we go ahead and like kind of figure it out exactly, you know? So we kind of know that we want it like this with most of it over here, but we want to pull this. So let's mark this. Let's, do, let's add like some markers to where we want to like do for it. Getting it exact is, you have to just weigh it against like what, what makes sense. But like I do want the wing, kind of this this part of the tail kind of here, and I do want this part of the tail kind of here, right? Okay, and I do want this wing like right here, okay? And I want the one of the more important parts, the feet, are going to be right there. So you kind of get the you kind of get a sense of where you're aiming for this way. And we're painting this, so it doesn't really matter that I've I've marked that with a pen as opposed to, but you can use I I like I particularly like chalk little uh little white chalk. I have one. A lot of these, yeah, I do. Okay, I like these white chalk pencils, these charcoal, these white charcoal art art pencils for this because you do this right and then you just wipe it right away. Great for furniture, great for everything. Um, you just wipe it right away. Okay, so let's let's check here. So usually what happens is thicker things set up more quickly than thinner things. I think that we're at that point now. Let's go ahead and just check it. Yeah, see it will demold, but it's still very okay, so it will demold, but it's still very um malleable. Exactly what we want. So we're gonna 
very carefully demold it. Like I said, it's still malleable. So just be very careful as you're demolding it, right? Because you don't want to like mess up the details. So we do, we do want to make sure, grab it by the base here, and see instead of like, to get it started, I slightly, I guess. So this is the mold. Details are perfect. It's still a little tacky on the edges. That's good. It's going to help us. Okay. All right. So now we want to place it like this. All right. And we want to start molding it around like this. Okay. So we'll mold it around like this. And as you can see, the fact that it was still tacky on the back side is helpful to us because that is going to stick right there. And that's a good thing. Now, we're going to come in and we're going to come in here, okay? Um, and we're going to get some glue onto the piece. Okay? Glue under here, glue under here, right there. For the purposes of this piece, I am really not going to be concerned about glue getting outside the edges, okay? We're just going to we're just going to get the the thing down and then we'll worry about the glue on the edges towards the end of this process, okay? So now we just want to make sure, I'm going to put this down like this, and just mold it around, doing your best to keep things very even, okay? It's hard, but, it, like, it, it, for this mold, it's a little bit hard, honestly. Um, I chose a bit of a, <laughs> a challenge for myself, but I just want to, And do your best and keep all the pieces down. A little bit too much glue that I have here, so that's unfortunate, but it's okay. Make this work. Okay. That looks pretty good. Um, that looks pretty good. We're going to check the sides here. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to take our little craft brush, right, and we're going to just we're just going to get as much of this glue away, but, like, make it useful. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just going to make it useful. So, sorry, guys. Just making it useful. want to get this down. Okay, I want to get this down and get this to stay down, okay? We're just going to make it useful. Flipping it around, just make it useful, make it useful. We can always come back in there with, like, a specialized tool and get it. Come in there with a specialized tool and remove the glue as needed, um, which is, I think, what we're going to have to do. You hold that until it will stay on its own. Okay. That's staying basically on its own. Okay. And this brush, take this glue, the off. Okay, that's great. And now we need to attend to the other side. You, if you don't use um, tools, you will get glue all over your fingers. So if that's something that you're not interested in, yeah. So another way to do this, and this is something that I now, in retrospect, like I might, I might have chosen another way. Um, put the glue on and wait till it's a little tacky, kind of like applying eyelashes. Definitely something to do. So, yeah, so we just have to make sure we can make it work. And then once it's there, once it stays, it's going to stay forever because you molded it there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's going to stay forever. So, you just got to get it. And now we're going to wait for this to dry. So a really nice thing that you can do to make sure it doesn't come up. See, like, I'm having trouble with these two. They're kind of coming up. So 
I can sit here and hold this if I want to. <laughs> um, which is, you know, a surefire way. Or you can put some masking tape to hold and make sure that everything is good. Okay. I did bring the masking tape over here, but I think what we're going to do is just fold it. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. And then we're just going to have to worry about, like, this is, this is you know, you can see it's kind of gross with the glue. We're just going to pull that glue off later. Yet, once it's fully dry, we'll, we'll get rid of that glue. I did use a little bit too much glue. So that is why, like, usually what would end up happening is I'd end up, like, pushing all the glue into the little spots, and it would be fine. But we did use a little bit too much glue this time, um, which is, you know, I think that happens. And then, um, I think I've showed you this before, but if you don't happen to have little craft brushes, but you do have, like, barbecue skewers, that's, like, a super great way, that is a super great way of getting rid of little glue drops also. So, yeah, so we can do this. That'll help. Or even toothpicks. A lot of people have toothpicks. So that is that. And we're just going to wait for this to fully dry. Checking every so often to make sure that it isn't, yeah, that it isn't uh, coming out. So this quick here, like, it's very much almost dry now. Um, I like to give it another hour after this. Like, once it's, once it's kind of on there, right, just give it, like, a little bit of time. Okay. So once it's kind of on there and you're pretty certain that nothing is coming up, which is where we're at right now, um, you can go in. Uh, another way is once it's fully dry, you can take something like a sander, a little piece of candy paper, or <clears throat> I really like to use emery board. Yeah, see, like, I'll be able to come in here with this, you know, and just sand this down and make sure it's, like, not giving me... Uh, Make sure it's giving me what it needs to give me in terms of, yeah, yeah. Love to see it. And it's not that difficult to get these things, to do these things. This mold was actually a little bit more challenging than, than I expected, but I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah. I'm just going to wait for that to dry. And I will see you in the next part. Thank you very much for watching. And... If you could just do me a quick favor, and if you like this video, just go ahead and hit that like button, thumbs up, maybe subscribe to my channel, um, that way you get notified, you can just click that ringy dingy bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video, and let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want to see, I will probably do uh, more parts of this video, I'm going to make some molds for this side too, and I'll show you the process of both of these parts, I think it's going to be a really fun project, I oh, this one's ready too. So let's go ahead and demold that. Okay. And that's it. So then it's it's really easy, especially at this phase. If you just want to like take a pair of scissors, you can just take a pair of scissors, just cut around it like this. And these, because they're so thin. You have a longer working time if you did want to mold them around something. So I don't think I want to use this one for this piece, but we're going to go ahead and just give a shot a shot with it. We're just going to see what it looks like. You can do that. And then I recommend taking, um, make it as smooth as you absolutely can. You just take like a sanding block or um, an emery board like I showed you before. Those emery boards are, are especially good if you have, like, lots of little details like this, like all these little, like, bits and bombs. All right, so let's see. Do we want to put this here? I don't think we do, actually. No, that's not the move. That's not the vibes. Okay, cool. But, yeah, that's how you can use resin to cast these Mandela molds. It's hard because it's white, but you but it, it picked up every single fine detail. And I love these colors. Like, I honestly do. So. And another thing you could do, like at this stage, would be perfect if you wanted to cut it into like a little fan shape or anything of that nature. So, thank you for watching. I super appreciate 
everyone who comes by stops by and watches any one of my videos. And like I said before, if you want to just hit that like button, make a comment, or subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for coming by. Bye.